Okay, good morning. I think this is probably the earliest I've ever recorded a video. So we're going to finally get to our Endeavor OS follow-up video. It's been a bit delayed because I had a bit of trouble when I recorded the first episode or the first take of it, if you like. Um, OBS just sort of had a meltdown. But what we're going to do is just sort of go through how I've found the week. So it's been a little over a week now, maybe a week and two, three days. So um, it was my birthday yesterday, so I didn't record yesterday. So we're going to do it today and we're just going to sort of get through it and then go back to normal. So... On episode 7 of the Distro Spinner, we got Endeavor OS, which is what you can see here. If you click a link up the top right, you can watch that episode if you haven't seen that yet. So it's an Arch-based distribution, and this was lately, sort of quite recently updated to the April release. Ships with kernel 5.6.3-Arch-1-1, um, and Mesa is now 20.0.4-1. So I want to start with the installation process because that's something that I really did quite enjoy and um, it's becoming a habit me sort of really liking these Arch distributions that have the same sort of installation process. Let me just start this live. Oh, it's having a problem there. Let me just change the network version to a bridge. Uh, let's just chuck it on there and then we can start this VM up. So I've created a couple of VMs for the purpose of this follow-up video. So let's just play that now. And we're just going to sort of go through the installer once more quickly. I just want to show you some parts in particular that I really do enjoy. And we've also got a couple of VMs there for GNOME and i3. And then one more for XFCE just so we can see what it looked like before I done all of this to it. I haven't given these too much system resources really. Yeah, I've just given it two, and then I think RAM, I've given it maybe two gig. Uh, two gig. Right, it's up. So we're going to jump straight to the installer, which is Calamares. So, so I think it's, we'll see what version it is. It's three point something. But anyway, so this is the first part. You get the offline and the online method. We went for the offline method, which gives you Endeavor OS with their sort of look and feel, or theming, if you like. But I'm really quite impressed with this online section as well. So if we just do that, and of course it shows you a terminal window of everything that's going on as well while you're going through it. So here we are at Calamares, which uses a version 3.2.20. So we're just going to click next on everything. I just need to get to the um, sort of package selection bit, which is the, which is the part that I want to talk about a bit. Okay, cool. So this is the part that I really did like. So, and I noticed this on, was it, what was the last one that I really enjoyed? Arco Linux done something similar as well. So not only does it give you a selection of quite a few different desktops there, and I did also try their GNOME and their i3, but then if you expand on these options, it then gives you some sort of manual control over which packages exactly gets installed. And I'm a big fan of this, and I think a lot more distributions should probably go this way of doing things, because then you can kind of customize it and just sort of slim things down before you get going so if you was to sort of open up gnome because there's a couple of things in gnome that i think you kind of need that isn't in included in the base install like gnome tweaks um, chrome gnome shell for your sort of extensions um, and so some arc icon theming and things there but i just wanted to talk about how much i like that just to sort of maybe more distributions might do that in the future and it also gives you the sort of option to do your nvidia drivers there as well so that's kind of all I want to talk about for the installation process. Um, it wasn't the fastest, obviously, on the online one because it's got to fetch a few packages, but the offline installation was super quick. All right, so what we're going to do is just force shut down this because I won't be worrying about that now. So we're going to force that one off. So we're going to quickly, um, yes, we're going to quickly have a look at the XFCE as it comes out of the box, and then we're going to go through with the rest of the video. So I've got another VM here with XFCE. At least I hope this is the right one. I think this is the right one. Again, it's got two gig RAM and two CPU cores. Oh, we've got a vanilla XFCE. Um, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to sort of leave this one then, and I'm going to. I wonder if we can go to the Endeavor. So there's the Endeavor OS wallpaper. We've already got that. Um, Okay, we won't worry about that for now. So this is the vanilla XFCE if you were to sort of choose that version. We're going to go back into that live version. And I'm going to show you just the sort of package selection very quickly. So let's shut that one down. And open that one back up. 
but while we're waiting for that to sort of start so this was the offline version but then in the welcome screen you get quite a few sort of uh, sort of options let me just make the screen a bit bigger the resolution there's display on here I never use this old menu display right, let's just chuck that up to HD 1920 by 1080 okay so it's full screen that so the welcome screen is quite a cool little sort of welcome screen that's got a lot of options there for you so this will be sort of post installation stuff so it doesn't come with a graphical sort of package manager so if you're sort of a bit scared of a terminal then this might not be the one for you this particular desktop anyway although you can install one so you can update your mirrors here and then choose your sort of you know location and then HTTP or HTTPS and then this what I thought was quite cool so as I said it doesn't have like a graphical user sort of update manager or anything like that but if you click this it will open up a terminal and it will sort of essentially prompt you for the password and then it will go through the series of commands that you need to do to update the system which is quite handy and it's you know a lighter way than sort of having a GUI there if you don't need one and if you're the sort of person that always has your welcome screen pop up every time you start your computer it's a simple process of just clicking that and then away you go um, another one that's pretty cool is detect system issues so that'll sort of go through any package issues and sort of see if there's anything there and as you can see we had no issues there um, and then you have Endeavor OS to latest which will sort of update you to the latest version but we are already on the latest level I do believe they call it yeah your system is already at the latest level so we're going to go for the package management here which will open up their web browser and just sort of talk you through things and sort of give you some instructions of how to manage your packages which is quite handy as I say if you've not done this before um, and as it says at the bottom here creating a reliable package management tool is very challenging and a reliable package manager is essential to a trouble free system thus Endeavor OS only provides Pacman, Make Package and Yay which is what we're going to get to next so on the AUR repository in Yay so it's all sort of ready to go for you and you can install your packages quite easily with Yay as well just by going Yay-S package name so they sort of they try and make it easy for you with these links here to sort of get you going and then also you've got the NVIDIA users the Bluetooth and in forum tips and then that will just open up another web page there um, and lastly um, as I said it's quite a slim down version of XFC it doesn't come with too much out of the box we'll briefly have a look at that in a minute but again you can go to install more apps here and it will install LibreOffice which will be the fresh branch as you can see there LibreOffice fresh and you can also do your Bluetooth stuff Chromium web browser and firewall so that's the welcome screen so we're going to close this one now and hopefully not have to start it again so let's go to log out and shut down oh we've done suspend tell you what let's just force close it I can never find this button right let's go off of this one and we're going to force close that now force off and hopefully this one's started up now just so I can show you sort of the, the default packages that do come with it um, no I think this one's having a bit of a nightmare okay well if you've watched the first distro spinner you'll know the sort of default packages it comes with and as I said there would be a link so I've put one in the description as well so it includes sort of a web browser your files manager and sort of the essentials but then nothing else really and lets you kind of build on top of that which I thought was quite a good idea so we're going to shut that down now and um, the only thing that I think it was sort of limit is a new user might feel a bit out of his depth straight away which is why I'm sort of in my final thoughts you'll see why I don't quite recommend this implementation of XFCE as their sort of go-to for a new user right so the default look and feel we've changed things a little bit as you can see we have a plank at the bottom now and we've moved our panel to the top and we've removed windows buttons um, but that's all I've really done usually I would use the shade theme for my plank but because I quite like their sort of color here of blue let's just go on here I've left it as is and we've just got transparent 2.1 theming for my panel uh, for my dock which just gives a little shade shadow around each icon there and as you can see I've installed quite a few extra programs so the default theming as I say it's on a solid color for your top panel which is nice and I've left it like that 
and I've actually been really happy with the sort of the way they themed it out of the box. All I've done is added a nice little wallpaper to sort of match the colour theme, and I've left it as is apart from. So if we go into appearance now, so by default it will be on the arc darker theme, but I'm just happy it has the arc theme at all and then you can just click arc dark if you prefer a dark theme and the default icons were the arc xd i actually prefer just straightforward arc icons because i like a just this nice square icon so we stuck with arc icons there for our arc icon theme and that was kind of the default look and feel and you also have your workspace grid here which they've got four ways so up down left and right usually i would just keep it on a sort of normal left to right but i've been okay with sort of the way they've done it in here with the sort of grids and i've left it you know as it is so that's basically all we've done to this desktop and as I say you use Funa as your files manager because this is XFCE and in my home folder we're going to briefly talk about this these are all sort of sim linked to a different hard drive which is why I haven't got my usual Albert installed on here because I've noticed when I used Albert and it followed sim links at boot I was using like an additional 200 250 megabytes so for my launcher here it would have been tied well it was tied to the left super but i like to snap windows left to right with super and left to right and when you've got your keyboard sort of shortcut assigned to here using the super key that sort of takes precedence over that and it won't let you really interact with your windows using the super key so all i've done is i've changed this shortcut to what i would usually have um albert so space and enter uh, space and alt and space basically so if you go to whisker menu i use alt and space now which will open up our whisker menu and then that's sort of okay for me because i'm used to doing that for albert so i haven't got my file search there but i've i've been okay throughout the week i've not really missed that too much so that's basically what i've done in terms of just look and feel and as i say i've left it kind of default and i've been really happy with it really so my performance sort of how we've been getting on with performance has been brilliant i've had multiple vms going a lot I haven't really suffered any crashes during it at all. I've been playing games on Lutris and Steam, editing videos on Caden Live, been having my Discord going, multiple tabs, and it's really handled everything quite nicely. And I've been using the workspace grid a bit more, actually. I'm still not used to using up and down on XFCE unless I'm on GNOME, because I generally will always just go left to right like so. But it's been nice, I've enjoyed it. So what we're gonna do now, is jump open to actually no before we do that i'm going to talk about how i found sort of stability wise so in my discord channel people have been talking about sort of nvidia on arch and how an update's been breaking sort of sort of semi regularly for them and things i don't use any sort of nvidia stuff so i can't really mention any of that but for me it's been you know as stable as you can expect a rolling release updates have been fine i haven't bothered installing a graphical user package manager i just use the terminal so if we just run the update command now quickly um, we'll see you never know it might break now but it hasn't and it's been absolutely fine so i don't know if i've got anything to update i do so we have a terminator update which is the terminal that i use open vpn enigma um, ah new kernel linux 5.6.5 arch dash 3.1 image magic and libver and then headers so i'm not going to bother updating it because after this i'll tell you what we will just for the sake of this video because after this video i'll be starting with a different distro um, for the distro spinner wheel but yeah so sort of stability and updates i've had absolutely no problem um, i've been doing it all through the terminal as well as installing my packages and it's been easy enough and i haven't really noticed anything that would sort of make me want to instantly jump to a different distro to be honest it's been a fun week so i want to talk about some of the other desktops that we sort of saw in the installation process so we're going to jump to gnome first and gnome is probably the one desktop on here that i would recommend to a new user if they wanted to use endeavor os purely for the fact that the gnome suite of applications include sort of gnome software and stuff so there is that option of a graphical user interface software store to install packages and updates if you're not too comfortable using a terminal so we're going to quickly pop open this one again same system resources for this vm so two gig ram and two cpu cores and throughout sort of testing all of this i've had multiple wall running at the same time on this computer and again performance has been absolutely fine Right, hopefully it will start up fairly quick. I think I've set the um, resolution already. I have indeed. So quickly, but what we're going to do is sort of, as I say, it's Arch. So you'll have the latest version of GNOME, which is 3.36.1. 
And again, you get the same welcome screen across all versions of Endeavor OS. Oh, we've got the wrong thing open there. So I probably should have assigned more system resources to this VM in particular because GNOME is a bit more heavier than the other ones that we used, but I just kind of wanted to show you a few things on here. So if we go into the about, as you can see, we are using our um, GNOME version 3.361. So latest version of GNOME, and what we're gonna very quickly do is, this is why I would recommend this version of their distro to a new user, you get graphical user ways to manage your packages. So you get GNOME software here, which will show you updates for packages and things like that. And you can sort of go through your installed and then you also have packages. But if you open this one, you then have like a little sort of selection of additional things, even KDE desktop and stuff like that. So if you want to use Endeavor OS and you're not too sort of comfortable with the way they've done the XFCE one, I would recommend you try out their GNOME version in the online install process. So we're gonna shut this one down now. So power off and power off. I'm probably just gonna force it off as well. Force off. Okay, so that's um, the GNOME version. I briefly looked at their i3 as well, which I'm gonna do a separate video on at some point because I quite liked the look of it. I didn't spend too much time in it but I like the way they've set it up. So I think this one deserves its own video, which I will do in the coming weeks. And we just sort of do a little sort of couple of days with it and see how I find it. But I think they have a nice implementation of i3 here. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to load up and it's got the right screen resolution. I don't know if I've set this yet. No, I haven't. Let's quickly open up. I'll tell you what, let's just do it in the terminal. Also, you get a little notifications at the top here where your DRUM menu would be. And then we'll talk about the bottom bar in a moment as well, which they themed quite nicely. So let's go into our terminals here. And you also get the same welcome screen as well. Uh, this is one of the keyboard shortcuts that confused me at first. I'm used to sort of it either being Windows Q or Windows Super in Q, but they use, and you also get news there as well. They use um, Alt 4, which was a bit of a learning curve because it's just not in my muscle memory for this. And my keyboard has the function switches, so I have to press Fn F4, which is a bit annoying. Anyway, let's set our resolution. To 1920. And then let's close some of these off. See, I just went to do um, using Q and that will exit i3. So I'm still not used to the F4 one. So we'd probably change that in the week that we do the sort of separate look at this one. Let's open up nitrogen as well, just to sort of sort that wallpaper up while we're looking at it. Um, let's just go bang, bang, click apply again, and that will reset it. Um, and it's F4. So this is their i3 setup, which is very nice actually. It's got a nice sort of customization at the bottom bar here with your sort of windows names of things that are open. So you've got your terminals, files, and browser there. You have your little network monitor, and then you have your battery, but this is a computer, so we don't, we'll don't. we always have 100% sound. But I do like these little things here. So if you were to click that, it would give open up a text file with all of the key bindings there if you wasn't too sure, which is what I had to jump into just to check out what quit window was. So, and then you also have your config there. They open straight up there, and then you can edit you know, additional things in there. So yeah, I think their way of doing i3 is really quite nice, and I'm gonna definitely do a separate video on that, so keep an eye out for that one. So what we're gonna do now is just power off, and we're also just gonna force it off because I don't need to wait, and so that was quite quick. Okay, right, so yeah, my final thoughts then, basically, it's been a really good week, I've enjoyed it. Um, it's been a good series in the sort of entry in the Distro Spinner series, but for the next few episodes, I'm gonna not take any Arch-based distributions because this is turning into the Arch show at the moment. I think this is the third Arch one now. Not in succession, but in very sort of close to together. Where I'd rank this though, I'll probably still prefer Arco Linux and I'll probably still prefer Salient, but I think they all, they're all for different categories really. So I think, you know, Salient focuses on the gaming and sort of multimedia side of things. Arco Linux, I'd sort of just say as a general purpose one, whereas Endeavor, it kind of follows in the vein, I'd say of Antaragus OS, which is now a dead distro. And I'm glad it sort of continues in that vein and gives a sort of Arch Linux users the sort of distro that they need really. Really did enjoy this one. 
So new users, if I was to recommend this to anyone, um, it would be the people in between sort of new user and you know advanced if you like. So somewhere in the middle where you're sort of ready to venture outside the confines of your you know, distro that kind of holds your hands a bit more and you kind of want to fiddle with things a bit, I would say check out the XFCE version of Endeavor OS. For a super beginner, I'd say you can still use this, but go for the GNOME version because it gives you more options on how to sort of manage your packages and it will get you up and running quicker than this version might be if you're sort of twiddling your thumbs a little bit. But thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I'm sorry for the delay on this one, but yeah, it's been a good another good week and this is, you know, oh, I don't want to say it's worse than the other two Arch-based distributions that I use, it's just different. But yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.